Yeah, it's the 501, baby. Uh-huh. You know how we get down on the Whoopin podcast. Woo. Shout out OD, shout out G Holmes, it's the best. Big sexy. Welcome back to another episode of the Woo Pig Podcast, coming to you live from the Insurance Max Studios, where we talking about everything Arkansas Razorback football and basketball every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday at 8.30. Check us out. Also, check us out on thewoopig.com. Experience peace of mind with Insurance Max, your one-stop solution for home, auto, and commercial insurance statewide. Don't wait. Call today for a free no-obligation quote. Secure your future with Insurance Max, where protection meets affordability. Dial now and safeguard what matters most. Holler at my guy, Wes, Caleb, and Sandy over there at 870-534-2823. Let them know you heard it on the Pig Podcast. And the Pig Podcast, man, we stream it on all major platforms, YouTube and Twitter. That's it. Find us there. You know where we be. Make sure you follow us on all those handles on YouTube and Twitter. And if you enjoy the audio-only version of the podcast, You can check us out everywhere, Apple Podcasts, but we really rock with Spotify. You can switch between audio and video over there. Check us out. And we can't forget about our OG sponsor, 3M Electric, the trusted commercial and residential electrical contractor as a SDVOSB. They're dependable and reliable with no job, too big or small. When it comes to your electrical needs, contact 3M Electric at 479-408-9865. Let them know you heard it on the Woo Pig Podcast. And, man, y'all already know who I got in the building. <laughs> Yo, what it do, Woo Pig family? It's your boy G. Holmes in the building, a.k.a. Big Sexy. Somebody out there holla for me. Oh, oh, oh my God. Mm. OD, what's up, man? What you got for us tonight, baby? Hey, baby, you know we got something special, man. We we talking about these halls as always, man. And man, why, you know why? what? Uh, yeah, we but we on the football now. We gonna we had to we had to retire the basketball <laughs> for a little while. We might do a little something something on the on the basketball front, but we had to retire for the night. We gonna talk a little football, man. We got a special yes, guest sir. in the building, man. We got Yo. Carter B in the building. What Looking up, real Carter? Crispy. <laughs> Carter the Power, man. Yeah, I know y'all know who he is. If you don't, give him a round of applause anyway. What's up, baby? Check him out. <laughs> you can you can definitely find Carter on his uh Power Hour SEC where he does the entire SEC. He he covers it all. Alabama, Georgia, anybody off of can't get about his LSU Tigers. You know, he got another channel, uh the Power Hour Power Hour LSU, right? Yeah, that's right, man. That's right. Okay, uh, so you, we 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 gonna get back with him when it's time for Arkansas to play LSU because you know we we get, we right. bringing the boot back this year. That's all. That, that's all that matters. We bringing the boot back this year. <laughs> yeah, hey, look, I, I'm I'm happy that um, the game is already confirmed for 2025. So uh, that's obviously a, a good thing. But I'm looking forward to go to to to, to Fayetteville later this year but guys thanks for having me good to see you and uh let's let's have some fun man yeah man, absolutely, absolutely absolutely man you know I, I was thinking man and i was just like i saw your video that you did on uh malachi singleton man if y'all ain't seen that make sure y'all go tap in with carter and check that out yeah that's did a good, good did some good work on on the, on the video on that and it got me to thinking man will we see malachi singleton under center for the University of Arkansas. What what do you think about that, Carter? Yeah, so it, it comes down to range of outcomes. So you have Taylor Green, who is a very flawed quarterback coming over from Boise State. I feel he gives you a higher floor, right? He is a better athlete than Singleton or anyone in that quarterback room. 
and he is more experienced. So you know what you're going to get out of him, right? And dual threat quarterbacks who have Taylor Green's running ability, it is really good. I, I think as a runner, um, he's better than KJ. He might be teetering on Matt Jones level when it comes to being able to run uh, at the quarterback position. But as a thrower and just a consistent quarterback, he's he's very flawed. So you have this sure floor type of quarterback with one door. And then on the other door, you have Malachi Singleton. You don't really know. You really don't because you've not really seen him play at an SEC level. I consider him the higher upside option because who knows? He could be special. He, he could be um a a guy that is truly dynamite behind center and you do see some of that uh in his high school film you know obviously his final year in high school he was very banged up and we he's just not really played a whole lot of game reps uh since his junior year of high school so i consider him a, a a very fun option i i in judging uh oliver uh his his the high school tapes between him and chris well once again it's very limited sample. I I do find Singleton uh, to be the more talented of the two options, and I, w- I would love to see uh, him get an op- opportunity. So let, let me know what you guys say. Do you want to get? You want to? I, I personally think that he's a better thrower. He throws the ball a lot better. He's more accurate. I think where he falls short is no pun intended is his height. He's only right. six feet tall. Mm. Uh, and with Jalen Green being 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, he, and he's faster, I think he gives Bobby Petrino more to work with uh, for layers. You can you can put him out there. You can do some, some read action. Uh, you can get him out on the outside quicker. Uh, so, it, and plus with the fact that NIL plays, plays a big part in that and Hey, they probably gave him the bag. They probably want to see what they got in him. So right, that's my take. G, what about you? Well, I think like, you know, like you were saying, Singleton can make the throws. He can make all the throws, but so can green. Now, both of them had a new playbook to learn. So we, we can't really just, you know, chalk it up to this guy knows the playbook a little bit better. You know, so, you know, they really battle in this springtime. For me, I think that they're going to probably give Green probably the majority of the ones uh, in practice going through the spring because of his versatility. Like you were saying, he is, uh, you know, a big body. He's got a lot of speed, and he can also make the throw. So you got a true quarterback controversy, and and that's that's really good for, for business. Uh, you know, these guys are going to be battling. They're going to make, make each other better. But hopefully these guys develop a good relationship. I think that's more important to me than who's going to get the ones. I think that if these guys develop a good relationship and work together, we could have a really good quarterback duo. Yeah, absolutely. And and you can't count out Chris Well, I'm, I'm very interested. I did a deep dive on KJ Jackson uh, earlier this offseason and, Obviously, he committed to a somewhat different regime. Uh, I find him very interesting as a left-hander. Um, he, here's what I would say, though, from a neutral perspective, and, and I just shoot it straight when it comes to all teams, even including the team that I graduated from, LSU, right? I, I try and be as objective as I can. Arkansas is in big trouble. Uh, there's just no other way around it. This this, this team, this roster, they are – they're, they're they're shooting in, shots, Andy. <laughs> I, 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 they in big I, trouble. I, I well, that's part of the reason why I wanted to go on your show. You're not gonna, uh, you guys shoot straight. I, I, I mm-hmm. Oliver and I talk uh, fairly often. Yeah. And you know when you did the Joseph Pinion hit the portal thing, <laughs> what well, actually happened? Uh, it was it a little harsh. <laughs> Would I have delivered it as direct as you? I don't know, but it, you, you you're being honest. So I think you guys mm-hmm. would appreciate my honesty. And yeah. Oh, yeah. normally when, when I look at a, a matchup between um, two college football teams, obviously I'm like you guys that look at who's at home, who's on the road, when is a game being played. But when you're a school like Arkansas and you're playing a lot of really 
good teams in the SEC, I ask myself, which team has a better quarterback? And oftentimes, if the inferior team doesn't have the better quarterback, I am for sure fading you, okay? It is going to be hard this year, if you look at Arkansas' schedule, to say, yeah, we got the better quarterback. Uh, And and that's where things get tricky for me when it comes to projecting uh, this Arkansas roster, right? You uh, play Texas A&M this year. I think Connor Wigman's really good. You play Tennessee. I think uh, Nico is very, very, very good. What's up, DZ? Good to see you. Uh, LSU, you, you have Garrett Nussmeyer, who's also really good. Then you play Texas, you play Ole Miss. They also have returning quarterbacks that are very good and will be drafted uh, next year. Missouri with Brady Cook is also really good. So these are guys with a ton of SEC experience that are returning. And Arkansas will be inferior at the quarterback position in almost every one of the Power 5 games that they play next year. And that's not a good thing. That's where you're hoping Bobby can scheme things open or we go back to the debate between Taylor Green and Malachi Singleton. Maybe Malachi Singleton is a superstar, and we just don't know it yet. So uh, that that's where things get very interesting. You know, you, you bring up an interesting point um, about the amount of quarterbacks that we got that we haven't seen and we don't know what we have. Uh, yeah. Chris Well, do you feel that if Chris Well sinks to number three, when the depth, when the official depth chart comes out after spring ball, you think he'll hit the portal? Yeah, he's got to. I, I think it would be nonsensical mm. for him to stay. Um, go play. Uh, yeah, you you were dealt a really rough card going to North Carolina and sitting behind two NFL starters. That's that's it's just a tough card. But you also transferred to Arkansas with another future NFL guy there. You weren't ever beating KJ Jefferson out. And with the way the portal works, there's no way you can assume that you're for sure going to be the starter. And I think at this point, he was probably thinking, okay, I'll sit behind KJ for a year, and then I'll be the guy in my home state. Well, it's just not what it's worked out uh, to, to, to be at this point. And if you are a quarterback and you are expecting to be the starter this year, and you're closer to the number three guy than you mm-hmm. are the number one guy, uh, you, you, you need to you know, get you, get you some, some luggage and, and pack your bags and go somewhere where you can play. Now, is that a division one power five school? I don't know, but hell go light it up at UCA. Go, 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 go play somewhere where, you know, uh, you, you, you can play and who knows, you can go light it up there and then you could go back into the power five level and, 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 and play your final year. But I, I do think, if he is the number three guy, he needs to go. Absolutely, man. I definitely I agree with you 100%. DZ, what you think about that, man? Man, who would have thought? I mean, you brought up some great points. Coming into this offseason, nobody ever expected Singleton to even give any real starting push. So just the fact that his name is the name that we're hearing the most um, it's, it's a little scary. I think he kind of got to leave. It's, it's it's really tricky waters for Criswell. He just, again, had bad luck, I guess you could say, as far as the, the quarterback carousels at both schools that he's been to. So it's pretty crazy. Um, I think it's crazy as an Arkansas fan because, like you said, he just named all the great quarterbacks that's supposed to be coming into the SDC or a lot of first-time starting guys who are really – really highly looked upon we have a lot of just question marks we don't know what green is going to be we don't know what singleton is going to be and we barely even know chris well is so it's kind of scary to have hope for this season but at the same time on the flip side of that it's like we could have a superstar green could be the next lamar jackson we don't know you know that's just having high hopes singleton can be the next who knows what but I'm really excited for what we got to look forward to. Like we in a, we in a really good spot just as far as having a breath of fresh air after the KJ saga and how that went down. So, you know, Arkansas fans, let's have hope, man. Uh, hopefully, we go into LSU and we give uh, Carter everything they can handle with our brand new quarterback next season. <laughs> hey, I'll be I'll be I'll be in favor for the game. Let's do it. Let's go. Are you coming yeah. to the spring game? Uh, when, no. when is your spring game? When is it? Is it the 13th? April, yeah, April yeah. 13th. 
And as you know, this is the first year Pittman is allowing fans and media to be there. So uh, oh, really? we're definitely going to be in the I house. Didn't know, I, I didn't know that. Oh, that's, that's yeah. interesting. Okay. Yeah, and it's the the format is going to be a little bit different too. It's going to be actual game time. You know, it's not going to be just running plays and then just you know half running the plays like he's done in the past. Petrino wants them to suit up and let's see what we got. There you go. So you, you it's going to be a it's, yeah, it's going to be a true red and white game this year, not just a you know let's get out here and sweat a little bit. Yeah, I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you guys this. All right. Uh, so with, with every single team in the SEC, um, there are some teams I cover more than others. And the two teams are Arkansas and Tennessee. They show me the most love. So I do the most videos uh, on them. But I do keep up with, you know, most of the teams. And outside of ETN, who's in some hot water right now, yes, I, 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 I do feel Jaquindon Jackson is a difference maker. I really do feel that way. Uh, one way I, I, one reason I feel this way is because I did a video on him, and I've done multiple videos on him that that have done really well. And you guys would be shocked at the amount of Utah fans that have reached out to me and said, "Yeah, we really miss this guy. This guy was really good. This mm-hmm. guy uh, was just hurt, and he wanted a fresh start. And he goes all the way up in Utah. He gets to come back closer to home." And this is a blue collar guy who played through a lot of injuries. This is a guy who breaks a lot of freaking tackles. Is he a home run hitter in the same way that a a McFadden, a Fournette or someone like that? No, but the guy has some juice. He still has some, some tread on those tires. I I think he will be a very underrated player uh, going into the SEC. And it would not shock me if he gets in that 607 yard, uh, 700 yard range by the end of the season and that may not sound like a lot but Bobby Petrino historically moves his running backs around I think he'll separate from the other backs in that room and and be a guy that a lot of Arkansas fans can can hang their hat on hmm. yeah yeah I, hope so. I mean but the, we always talk about the Razorback running game we we could probably hire somebody from Shell gas station to have a good running game with him we don't <laughs> care about the running game we want a quarterback we need somebody yeah. who can throw the. We want win. We want somebody who can throw the ball. Yeah, yeah that's no, what we. I, that's what we want. I get that. And uh, before before I leave here, I, I I'm also concerned about this wide receiver room. Um, oh man, concerned. Yeah, I'm concerned. Why? I, why? I just, mm. why you I, say I just, that? I, I just think it's a good group. I don't think it's a great group. Uh, I think Armstrong is. Uh, a, a very good player, and the rest are, are just question marks, right? Uh, you got some guys moving into some single-digit numbers. Are I, I, I always say if you if you move into a single-digit number, I, I want to see some single-digit plays. Uh, I don't mm. know if you guys picked up on that trend, uh, mm, but definitely. everybody everybody wants that aesthetic. All right, so I, I think I saw Broden move into a single-digit. I, I saw someone else move into Uno. Well, I, I need to see Uno plays, and I don't know if, if those guys uh, – I know uh, a, a lot of guys are high on Isaiah Satania. He's had some really good moments in camp wearing that Traylon Burks number 16 uniform. You have Isaac Tesla coming back, uh, who's been a really good player uh, over the past couple of seasons. But the only guy, if, if I'm a defensive play caller that scares me, is Armstrong. That's the only guy I feel that is truly a difference maker outside of Haas. And if I was Bobby Petrino, I would lean into the tight end room, which is a very good room. Uh, mm-hmm. Washington, if he's healthy, hell, run 12 personnel and run two tight end sets. Number one, that's something that makes you different. Number two, that kind of gets into Sam Pittman's physical philosophy. We're going to run 12 personnel. We're going to have two tight ends on the field. We're going to run the football and we're going to, play play action out of it and help our quarterback out. I would run a hell of a lot of 12 personnel, five Haas and Washington in that room. And then number three, Varkey's gums. Look, he can't block a lick. He, he is he is a terrible blocker, but True. the kid, the, the kid is truly special in the passing game. I think he can be a special pass catching mismatch type of weapon um, going into his year three year. So, if I was in that Arkansas meeting room, that's that's what I would tell them. Hey, let's scrap running eleven personnel, which is what everyone does. Let's do more twelve. Let's run the ball with Jaquindon Jackson and make life easier on our quarterback and on our offensive line. 
This is yeah. what uh, kind of like last year. This is what we 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 felt we were really good in the receiver room, both uh, at wide out and at tight end. Here's the deal with, that we had last year was the scheme that they were running. Some of the plays that they were running, if you just look at the overhead, and I know you do a lot of play breakdowns, you yeah. see a lot of those plays where the receivers are in the same area. And so you, you're you jumbling up on the defensive end, and that, that led to a lot of breakups. That led to a lot of different things. Now, whether or not that is the receivers not running their timing routes the right way, the right way, and yeah. they were just you know either cutting them short or not or running them too long or whatever the case may be. That was one of the major issues that we saw, not necessarily the talent wise in the room, but just the scheme that they were running and some of the plays that they were running. They just didn't seem to develop in a way that could be prosperous for us. Oh yeah, no, no I, I I agree. Enos was, was bad. Uh, he was probably the worst OC when he was uh, when he was there. And the offensive line is probably the worst SEC offensive line I've seen in the past couple of years. Um, it, it was joked about, and well, I just know this, it was joked about in other defensive line rooms how easy it was to move your guys around. So you're going to need Carmona, uh, the young man coming in from San Diego State, uh, home of Stevie Nicks, uh, to, to come in and, and be a, a big part of your offensive line room. Is he a guy uh, that could be an offensive tackle? A guy that I, I've seen just in the brief practice clips, and I've heard some good things on the Hill, um, is number 76, Robinson from from Little Rock. Um, he's an offensive tackle that's coming into the prime of his athleticism. Can he be an SEC starter? I, I would love that. I, I want to see guys uh, that, that are from the state of Arkansas be a part of Sam Pittman's unit that he cares more about. Um so hopefully uh, he turns into something. So this offensive line, of course, as many of you know, was was bad last year. And hopefully uh, for you guys that that unit becomes better. Absolutely, 100%, man. Carter, I told you I only needed you for 15 to 20 minutes, man. Yeah. I appreciate your time, and I ain't going to go over that. But, man, we appreciate no, you coming you, on and, and if, kicking if, it with us. I can tell, Oliver, you had one more question. So go right ahead. <laughs> one more. I will give you one more. Yeah, hey, uh, for those that don't, you, you help my uh, new setup here. So anytime you ask me to come on, I'm going to do it. I really appreciate uh, uh, your your technical guidance. So hey. feel free to fire, fire, fire one more in there um, if you want to. Now, I, I got one more question. So I, you, you gave it to me, so I got to get, I got to get it. Go for it. With with the addition of Bobby Petrino, don't, don't, do you don't. do you think he can cover up the deficiencies in all the things that you said? He's gonna help. Um I understand he's old and I know that some people feel like he's hey, hey. <laughs> no, no, no. Look. He's older. People like younger coaches, right? Mm -hmm. Uh and I actually just got a text here about uh, in Arkansas. A guy I trust that's on the Hill actually just texted me. I don't know if he's watching right now, but hey, he might uh, be. <laughs> it, might, it, might, it might be. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, you know, I, I, I think he can. You know, th this is something that, that I would bring up about Bobby. He has also been really good in his first year at schools. He's always gotten things going relatively quickly. Uh, I felt last year at Texas A&M, he was hamstrung. I do think there was times he was doing some Jimbo things. But there was also some other times when he started running some plays I have never seen before. Some exotic designs started popping up in the LSU film. Um, there was a play I, I broke down in a breakdown on Power yeah, RSC. I saw line. that. Yeah, so you saw it where they ran. Uh, uh, I've never seen it. It was like a quadruple mesh concept. I've never seen it before, and it yeah. worked. AJ, they just didn't run the play. Uh, yeah, he probably. missed the dude wide open for the touchdown. You pointed that out. Right. Yeah. And it would have yeah. been a critical. And, and to even make it better, it was a two-point play. So it was, you this this shit's got to work or, I didn't mean a curse. It's got to work or it, it 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 doesn't, right? And I, 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 I think Bobby still has some juice. I, I don't know if that's. Optimism for all my Arkansas fans. Most of my fan, most of my best friends that were in my wedding uh, live in Fayetteville. I, I don't know if it's me hoping good things uh, for you guys, 
but I do think he'll he'll scheme some things open. I do think he'll increase uh, pre-stat motion usage, which is what I feel Arkansas should do. I do think he'll make your play action pass a game, which is something else I think Arkansas should do uh, be a lot better. But it's players over uh, play callers as always. And, you know, I, I, I love you guys. I, I just, for me right now as a play caller or just as a defender, there's three guys that scare me on Arkansas's offense. It's Haas, it's Quinton Jackson, and it's Armstrong. You're going to need more than just that. You're going to need Isaiah Satana to take that next step. You're going to need uh, Broden or whoever it may be uh, to take that next step. And you're going to need that entire offensive line uh, to take that next step if you're going to be able uh, to 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 be a 6-6 six and six program uh, next season. And one more thing before I skedaddle here. I do think – I'm a T-Will believer as a, as, a, as, a, as a defensive coordinator. I do like him. I really, really, really do. I think that unit I'm going to tell you why be, you like him when you're done. No, let's go. Let's hear it. The only reason you like T. Will is because he keeps running uh, Huss and Clark out there to defend your guys. That's the <laughs> yeah, only that's, reason yeah, you yeah. like him. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> oh, man. Hudson, AARP Clark, baby. Man. Like that dude. <laughs> He's never going to go. I mean, I, I don't know if Hudson Clark is going to play more years of college football than LeBron has played in the league. You Bruh. just can't get rid of him. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, no, I, I, I do think T-Will's a, a pretty good DC. Yeah. And uh, if, you, if you get that, you find a field goal kicker to replace Cam Little, you, who knows? Ar- Arkansas could sneak up on some folks next year. Yeah, I, I think, and I think we will. I think we're going to surprise some guys. We seen Bobby do more with less when he, when he first came in. He won five games with that first team, and I understand that's not a lot, but this team has way more talent than that team that he picked up back in 2011. Yeah. Or two, whatever year he came here. Yeah. Bobby Petrino, I got faith in Bobby. He going to make us better. We we only lost two games by more than a, more than a touchdown. We gave everybody fits. Mm-hmm. Bobby Petrino will make us seven points better. We can give uh, people the business this year. <laughs> hey, look, um, let, let me ask you guys this. Uh, this offensive lineman for market saw that's getting ready to flip to LSU. Is he, is he that's, good? That, that was yeah. I, actually our next topic. Yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. Do, do, do you think he's got juice? I, I've never I've never watched him. I, I have my own grading scale and all that stuff, but the, from Marion, the Patriots. What Man, what's up with this? Uh, Everybody, yeah. everybody's a five star when your when your defensive end is 5'10", 192 <laughs> pounds that you're going up mm-hmm. against, and you three oh one six six four. Oh, come right. on now. He he's Three at eight. a small school where it's probably only 12, 14 guys on the team. You gotta go both ways. Right. So yeah, yeah I, he's I mean, who they playing? Brinkley? No, no disrespect <laughs> to Brinkley. But they playing Earl. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying they not playing the 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 Little Rock Christians or the or the you know they ain't playing the big boys in in Arkansas. They playing the small schools. So when he get to LSU and he got to go up against Perkins, he gonna be like, hey, hold up, this dude fast and strong. I can't do nothing with him. He gonna be he yeah he's a, I, I'm 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 not saying that he's not any good because I'm sure LSU got a great. A uh, program, and you guys are gonna get that guy, and he'll probably be a beast. Yeah, but we gonna see. Him. Yeah, they gonna develop yeah. him. He gonna probably be yeah. a beast. He, he got the body for it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like I, I so that, that's what the text was about. The, 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 I, I don't know. Um, yeah. My my LSU folks told me he, he will flip to LSU soon. I'm not rubbing salt into the wounds because, well, he, and and this is something that that's held Arkansas back. There have been a lot of elite Arkansas guys that just have not lived up to even the, like the few four star guys that Arkansas has every year. You guys have probably talked about this at length. Uh, I could already see DZ uh, shaking his head right here. A lot, a, lot, a yeah. lot of those guys don't actually, you know, turn out right. Like you can really only count on a on on a few hands guys that you would say exceeded their top one hundred grade if if they're from Arkansas. Right? Like Traylon Burks did, uh, obviously. I can't really even think of anyone else said like, truly. <laughs> yeah, yeah truly that's, that's it. That's about, about it. it. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, well, Hunter Henry. Well, is Hunter Henry a four star? 
Yes, I he was. Yeah, I think yeah, he was. So long ago. Okay, <laughs> so so you you would think for sure. You would think for sure. Hudson Henry is going to be Rob Gronkowski mixed with Antonio Gates. He learned from, and then he just I I remember getting a text from someone in, in Little Rock oh, yeah. saying, "You you thought Hunter Henry was good? Wait till you see uh, the, the the younger Henry." I was like, "Oh sh." I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> we waited and waited and waited, and next thing you know, he was graduating. We was like, right. oh. it just never happened. It, it, it was a skeleton meme. You're just like, well, what's happening? John Travolta sounded like you. You're like, hmm, well, what's going on? That Will Smith in the middle of the living room. Well, what's happening? Uh, but, uh, but yeah, man. Well, thank you so much, Oliver. I appreciate it. Thank you, uh, sir, man. DG Holmes. I'm so glad to see you guys killing it. Over 200 people in here. Y'all guys got all kinds of crazy sponsors. Thank you for sharing your platform uh, with me man, tonight. I wish you guys you. Nothing like that. Hey, thank you a lot, man. Y'all go check Carter out, man, on the uh, Carter, 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 SEC. Power. There you go. He doing it. good things over there, man. We appreciate you, man. Hey, you have a good right, one. How about right, cheers, bro, man? Man, thanks, Carter, for, for coming in and kicking it with us. Uh, I got to switch DZ over here to this one. But man, it was good to have uh, somebody else here on the on the show with us uh, and come in and give us a different perspective. Somebody outside the Razorback uh, family, so it was good to uh, to have somebody else on the show. Man, thank you, uh, Carter. Man, we we definitely uh, appreciate that. Yeah, man, they got noses ball for sure. And like my boy Boss Hog said, man, come on, man. We giving you great shows out here, man. Get us to that 100 likes, man. We got some special hey, for you. Too. We ain't done yet. We got some we more special for you. We ain't done yet. Now, yeah, yes, sir. so we, we covered our second topic we was getting into. Just just before we get into that third topic, man, let me let me go ahead. and We've been rocking for about 30 minutes. Let's go ahead and holler at our sponsors, man. Let's let's talk to them. Hold up, man. Before, before we get to our sponsor, man, he want to say something to y'all. Woo Pig Podcast family, I have one simple question for you today. Why haven't you called me? If you're trying to protect your home, your auto, your motorcycle, your boat, your side-by-side, or more importantly, your business, how do you know you're not paying too much for your insurance? Give me a call today, 870-534-2823. And lastly, continue to support the Woo Pig Podcast. Appreciate that. Appreciate DZ. Go ahead and holler at the sponsors, man. We got to re- get that ad in. Hey, let's get it, man. So, saying it correctly this time, <laughs> shout out to our guys at Insurance Max. <laughs> uh, <laughs> experience the peace of mind with Insurance Max, your one stop solution for home, auto, and commercial insurance statewide. Don't wait. Call them right now for a free, no obligation quote. Secure your future with Insurance Max, where protection meets affordability. Call those guys at 870. 870- Five three four, two eight two three, and then you know we got to give love to our guys over at 3M Electric, serving Northwest Arkansas. They're your trusted commercial and residential electric contractor. As an SDV OSB, they're dependable and reliable, with no job too big or too small. So call 3M Electric at 479-408-9865 and let them know you heard it on the best podcast in Razorback Nation. We'll pick. Absolutely, absolutely. And let me jump over here real quick, man. I know I had uh, Little Rock 2517, man. We appreciate you as always supporting the channel. We did have another super chat. I am not going to read that, but I'm going to do this. Look, I'm going to keep it a buck with everybody in here. And I ain't never seen this guy in here before. We usually have pretty cool cats in here, man. We we love our family. But come on, guys. We ain't, we ain't going to. Tolerate no disrespect of anybody that comes on the podcast. We don't care if you super chatted or not. We don't care nothing about no money. We do this for fun. And we appreciate you guys keeping the lights on. But at the same time, the disrespect of any guest or anybody on the show that comes up, you know, nah, not not like that. We ain't doing that. That ain't what we do on the Woo Pick Podcast. We, we just want to give a, a big shout out to the family that really been rocking with us from day one. We threw something out for one of the members, uh, Tonka Tide, man, who've been going through so much this year. 
and man, everybody banded together to to make that happen for him, man. And I appreciate everybody who did that. I'm gonna be reading those names and, and saying big shout outs and thanks to thanks thank you to those guys who did that. But man, don't disrespect anybody who come on the show, man. That's all I gotta say about that. <clears throat> now, hey, back to where I was. Love. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. You don't need all that that nonsense about man. That's some garbage, man. Anyway, looks like Eric Musselman staying around, man. Looks like he ain't going nowhere, man. Hey, so let's get it. We can we can focus on who he's bringing in for visits and what he gonna do to right the ship, man. So I I'm I mean I'm happy about it. You know, stability yeah. is a good thing. So I'm rocking with Definitely. Musselman coming back, man. What you guys think about that? Well, I like I it. said before, I, like I said before, I ain't, you know, I'm rocking. I rock with him. You know what I'm saying? He he done some. I mean, everybody make mistakes. Everybody makes. Sometimes you, you know what I'm saying? You 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 bet on the wrong one, and and you know this year he done that. But I don't like the uncertainty. So when it gets to that uncertainty, like man, maybe maybe you know what? Whatever you're gonna do, just do it. So if he locked in, he gonna he gonna stay. Then guess what? I'm on roll with him. I ride with who in the seat. So guess what? Let's lock in and let's try to get some good people to come up on the hill and just, you know, get the thing back on track. Definitely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I I feel like when it comes to that type of thing, you got to kind of think about yourself. Let's say you had an accident. Let's say you made a mistake. Let's say you was in a point in your life where you were once high and you are now low. Would you want everybody to give up on you? We wouldn't. Life is about second chances and sometimes thirds. So let's give Musk another chance, man. I mean, you know, basketball is a, a weird sport where it's, it's quick. The emotions flare up fast. But I think he still is that guy. I think he still has a lot to prove. And I think he saw everything that people said about him this year. And I think he's going to use that as motivation. Like he said in the press conference, he's more motivated to work right now than he ever been. So let's see what he do. And plus, it's just better yeah. for recruits to bring back your coach. Recruits yeah, not going to want to jump around to a first-year coach too often. So let's go, Mus. You got our support. 100%. Go ahead, yeah, D- I don't go know ahead, where G- somebody asking what about Coach Box. I don't know where Coach Box is, man. He might be working. Yeah, yeah. He probably at work. But he coming, though. As soon as he, as soon as he get to his computer, though, he typing in. So y'all hang on. He, he going to be here to argue with somebody. <laughs> they in the comments talking about no coach box. <laughs> yeah, we need him to call in for this next segment because it's about to get real. <laughs> I know, right? Box, where you at, baby? Well, before we get into this next segment, man, I want to shout all these people out, man. Let's uh, give it to them. Some of them I know they I know their name on the show. Some of these I don't. Uh Woo Pig Double O, man. Thank you for helping Tonk Tonka Todd. Big <laughs> Big man Ross, appreciate yep. you. Mama Armstrong, yes, thank sir. you. Uh, Marlon Frazier, Luke Green, N- Nisha, uh, Jeremiah. You know, he always super chatting. You know, he always bigging us up, man. He he uh, chipped in on it. Sean Jack, Rico, Sean Jack being here all the time. Everybody knows Sean and uh, Rico. I don't know Rico, but Rico was like, hey, man, I'm not even going to chip no $5 in. I'm going to make it whole. And that's it. He hit, he, hit, he just dropped it down, and that was it. And mm. shout out to Bobbis, man. Bobbis, he took care of the hotel accommodations, man. Hey, bro, the Woo Pig family came together, man. 100. We really appreciate that. So yeah. if y'all like what we're doing, man, go ahead and help us out. We need seven, seven people to hit that like button, man. Come on. Now let's move on to the next segment, man. Hold up. We got Box in the building. Oh, Coach Let's Box go. got on work. Oh, oh, it's about to Perfect go down. Time. Everybody, <laughs> hey, so everybody that's looking for Coach Box, there he is. <laughs> Box working late tonight, boy. Hey, got to got to get that money, baby. Got to get that money. <laughs> Don't grow on trees. Hey, man. absolutely. Hey, man, you right on time for the next segment, man. This is DZ DZ segment, and this is a segment we have the most fun in, man. I'm telling you, this is one of the best ones. I can get it. Who you hey, got? Man. Who you got, baby? Do you got? 
So today, we gonna have a little fun, you guys. Um, we gonna play a version of Razorback, Would You Rather. So we all been through this season. We survived it. It's over. It's over, y'all. Take a deep breath. Oh, we survived. It was a crazy football and basketball season. But now I want to kind of look forward into some things next season. And I just want to know in the mind of next season, which one of these individual situations would you rather have? So we're going to kind of talk about it. We're going to pull on your heartstrings a little bit. And I think based on these answers, it'll kind of let you know what type of Razorback fan you are. Mm. We're going to have a little fun. Okay, starting it off hot. So next year, would you rather be bowl eligible in football or make it to the tourney? What would y'all rather? I want to talk to the panel on this one. What What's more important when it comes to next season? Because, you know, we didn't make it to a bowl or the tournament this year, which is crazy to think about. Which one would y'all rather see happen for the Hogs next season? Mm, box. <laughs> Hold on, say that again. Would you rather the football team be bowl eligible next year or the basketball team finally make it to the tourney? Oh, I can't say finally. We only missed one year. But would you rather the football team make it to the bowl or the basketball team make it to the tournament? Since Arkansas is the football, football state, I'd rather have a bowl. I ain't mad at that. Yeah, for me, I think I'd much rather – you know, get a bowl. And I'm not just talking about a, you know, toilet bowl. I, I want a bowl that matters. So when I when I say I want to be bowl eligible, I don't want to be barely bowl eligible. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to have to win that last game against Missouri to 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 get to six and six. I don't want that. Or seven and six, or whatever the case may be. I just need us to be, you know, relevant with something that, you know, we can be proud of in a bowl game. March Madness, I think it's almost a foregone conclusion that we're supposed to make the tournament every year. You, you're supposed to at least win 20 games. So I expect that. So for me, I, I much want I want the, I want the football. I want a good football season. Oh, Diddy, what you feeling? Would you rather this football team be in the ball or those boys be in the tournament? Hey, say that again. Inter introduce him again. I like that. Say it again. <laughs> no. We should not repeat it. <laughs> you, you muted, muted it, You muted it. <laughs> yeah, don't put me in, in uh, nothing with last yeah. name Diddy on the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, point going to jail out here. That was an accident. Okay. Yeah. Uh -uh, uh -uh. <laughs> no, man. Yeah, that's, that's the reason why, you know, oh, oh Diddy, that's, I mean, oh Diddy was oh Diddy before Puff Daddy was P Diddy. <laughs> and so when he became, you know, P Diddy, Oh, 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 don't want that no more. So it's OD. No. You know what I'm saying? Uh -uh. It's just OD, man. Take, put that off, man. man. Hey, I'm gonna get the I'm gonna get the podcast rated. <laughs> exactly, you know man. Saying? Can't be saying uh, Diddy around here no more. <laughs> well, to, to answer your question, man, I'm trying to be in the in that football tournament, man. I I, I want to be in both because I mean we, we 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 I feel like we deserve to be in in both. We got we got the support. We got the players. Well, maybe not, but I'm just saying we. Man, I want both. If I had to pick one, I'm going football, bro. I'm going football. Mm. What what you say? You know. The more I think about it, I think the obvious answer is football, but my answer is the tourney. And let me explain why. What tournament? I would rather <laughs> us. What you they say? Both tournaments. They both tournaments. Which which one are you talking about? The March Madness NCAA extravaganza. This and I say that because this. I would rather us have a successful basketball season and keep must and have a less great football season and finally get Petrino in the head coach. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to say it. I want Petrino back. Mm -hmm. And, um, you still muted. I don't know if you're trying to talk, but uh, yeah, he on the phone. Okay. But yeah, man, I think 
as much as I love football and I, I would, it would break my heart. I don't know how much my heart can take when it comes to football anymore. So I, I'm not saying I want us to have a bad season, but if I had to pick in this scenario, let's go must have a great season. Pittman, we thankful for everything that you brought us through, but it's time for the return of Bobby, the full way, the full head coach Bobby that we we're used to. So that's my answer. I'd rather us uh, have a March Madness bid than a bowl game. Well, I can tell y'all now with the players that must recruit in the portal, it ain't looking good. Yeah, you see that cat they got from UCA? Yeah, Box. that 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 center he got on the hill. This dude right. got this, this this dude got got mutt feet. He can't oh, jump. Man. No athletic ability. Is that what he recruiting? I'll stay with the football team next year. All this right, you get this kindergarten grade. This one, again. this one, you got to use your imagination for this one, man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, again, going into next season, would you rather have the best offense in college football or the best defense in college basketball? If we had to look forward and you had to think about, hmm, which one would you rather? Would you rather this Bobby Petrino offense be amazing, the best we ever seen, or would you rather us fix every defensive efficiency we had in our basketball team last season or next season, I should say? Mm. Bob, give me a high score in Bob Petrino offense any day of the week. Mm. Why you say that though? Why you say that? Because when when you got a um, a high score in offense and in college football, the whole year is exciting, regardless of what mm -hmm. the basketball team do. Facts. For me, uh, for, I'll go. Go ahead. For me, um, I want an offense, man. Give me, give, give me offense, man. I don't care about no defense. I, I, I care about defense, but everybody know, oh, shooting the ball. So I don't care about no defense <laughs> on football and basketball. So there it is. I give me the best offense I can get. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I want the best Bobby Petrino offense because I've seen a darn good one. If it get better than the one that we seen. That translates back into the last question. That's going to be a high bowl because if Bobby Petrino get an offense that's clicking like, you know, BP be clicking, mm -hmm. we, we know less than 10 wins. We're no less than a 10-win season because sometimes a great offense will overcompensate for a bad defense on football because you're just going to outscore them. All right. Hey, for real. DJ, did you go already? No, 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 I didn't go. All right, go ahead. I'm definitely team Bobby P. I mean, the worst thing about last season was watching KJ and Rocket and just like, bro, here we go again, another three and out. Here we go again. We couldn't even tell how good or bad the defense was because them boys were so trash. So, man, give me something to watch, man. Offense, it's an offensive time period that we in, in sports period. So you got to have that offense, man. It's not made for defenses to win no more. So give me the Bobby P offense every day. I don't care if Musk don't got a single defensive player. Skull. Hey, did you go there yet? I did. Let me explain. Mm. Let me explain to everybody something about Bobby Trino offense. Remember the year Bobby Trino got fired? That team yeah. was supposed to be top 10. Just because Bobby Petrino was not on the field, that was a trash football season with Tyler Wilson at quarterback. That's the difference between a Bobby Trino on your team and not on your team. Mm. Go ahead, DZ. Well, don't, don't, don't. I know a lot of y'all wondering, like, what? why we got these two former players? Well, let's get into it. If you could bring back either one of these Razorbacks for next season's team, which one would you bring? Layden Blocker? Or Sam Mbake. Um, who want to go first on this one? <laughs> you know, Not I'm going me. with Blocker all day. I so like boxing? I like Sam. I'm going with Blocker all day long. Okay. Why? Because you can get a receiver. Can't get a point guard that plays hard. 
Okay, we're gonna come back mm. to that. G, you wanna take the next one? <laughs> uh between these two guys? Yeah. I say yeah. between these two guys, I would probably much rather see uh Mbake because I the the reason why I say that is because yeah, Leighton Blocker was a you know kind of a dynamic player, but we really never got to see him that much. We did get an opportunity to see Mbake, and I think he would have only, you know, gotten better. I think he has a I think he, Mbake has a better upside as an overall help to the to the squad than just a single latent blocker was gonna have to the to the to the whole team. So give me number seven. I mean number uh eleven. Well, uh for me, man, I'm going I'm going with Mbake, man. He is a he is a uh a friend of the show. Not saying block or not, but I want to. We need we need receivers. We just had Carter on the show talking about how pedestrian our receivers are, except for Armstrong. We can use Mbake. We don't know what those you're gonna give us. We can use Mbake right now. So I'm going with Mbake. Mm. Deezy, what say you? I think Carter described it best. We don't know what we got coming. And just imagine Sam Mbake with Bobby P. If y'all saw any of that practice footage of Mbake cooking before he left the team, come on now. I was so excited to see him. And then out of nowhere, I just had to let it all go. So if I could go back, give me Mbake with Armstrong and what, Broden, Statania, we would have been in the best receiver room in the SEC, in my opinion. So... Bring Sam back. Well, speaking of bringing him back, man, we got Sam on the line, man. He coming in to talk to us about why the, why we should bring him back. And if it was, if it was up to us. What's going on, Sam? How you doing tonight, man? I hope he ain't got us on mute. You got us on mute? I know you're on the phone because I'm sitting there looking at his name. And <laughs> <laughs> what? It went to the bathroom. Oh, man, we gonna wait for we we gonna keep talking until Sam come back on the line. I'm gonna hang up and call him back. Um, but box, we gonna go to you. What did what did Blocker really show you that makes you say I want to bring him back? What did so Sam bad. show us? What, what did Sam, what did Sam show us while he was here? He said we want him back. DZ told you. No, yeah. he didn't say nothing. I mean, you see, you said he did so much. He didn't play. Blocker didn't play. What if That's Blocker true. got the necessary minutes and the necessary coaching that you want Sam to get? Sam didn't do nothing while he was here. Even though I like him, I don't want him to take this the wrong way. But what did he really do while he was here that Blocker didn't do? See, the reason I put them together is because I feel like they had the same story. Neither one of them got the opportunity. Neither yeah. one of them. They didn't get I the burn. Sam, I, they, think they, Sam, they, I, I think Sam got more of an opportunity because he was asked to go to the defense also. But that's what I'm he saying. Had but same, not, he had the same opportunity to do that dude that, that got a medical record that she had, had the same opportunity. But that wasn't his natural position either. It, was, it, it, wasn't, a, it, wasn't, a, it wasn't a dude that got hurt in that position. He but went over there and I'm just saying. balled out. Well, Sam, can you hear me? I'm having some technical difficulties tonight. Y'all keep gotta, talking. I'm gonna see if I can get him online. Hey, uh, so, hey, you just can't dismiss a player like a blocker that didn't get opportunity to showcase his skills completely. Can't do that. I feel like he he got skills. He has to he has to get a chance to showcase what he can do efficiently. I mean, I feel like Blocker got more of an opportunity than Sam if we really if we really talking about playing time and minutes. And you know, I, it's not it, a hey, you, you you know how easy it is to get on a six man rotation on the football field as a wide receiver. <laughs> no, you said how, easy. How, he, he said, yeah, you know how easy it is to get. Hey, well, you know it, it it ain't it ain't that hard to be one of the top six if you that dude. Uh, only five people. Only five people playing at one time on a basketball court. But it's only two to three wide receivers playing at a time on the football field. Most time it's three. 
You got a better mm. chance to get on a football field in a six man rotation than you do as a five man rotation at a, at a basketball on a basketball. I don't know court. about that. Why? Why you got more? Well, why don't you think that? I ain't but one point guard in the game at one time. Because you got, you got three wide right receivers in the game. You just got age. You got coaches' favorites. You just got so many things you can deal with, you know. And then as a wide receiver, you don't get the ball guaranteed to you every place. So it's a lot harder to get that opportunity opposed to a guard, somebody who gets to touch the ball frequently. You know what I'm saying? So you sit here honestly saying Blocker got the opportunity that he deserved this year. No, I'm saying neither one of them did. I promise. That's what I'm saying. Neither one of them so, did. So that's my point. How can you say how can you say Blocker and, and Sam and not both of them got the same opportunity? Neither one of them got the right opportunity. Hmm. So how are you gonna just dismiss right. Blocker and he didn't get the same opportunity? All right. So now we we got Mbake on the line with us. So Sam, you there? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. How y'all doing? Man, we good. All we right. good. So, What's up? hey, DZ, go go ahead and run that question back to to Mbake real quick, so he <laughs> so he can hear. It. So the question on the would you rather for next season is: if you could bring back either Hog, who would you bring back for next season? Layden Blocker on the basketball side, or Sam Mbake on the football side? So, so we asking you, Sam. Why would why would we pick Sam and Bakke to come back to the Hogs? What, uh, what, did, what did what did we not see that we that we missing out on? That's the that's the big question. Ah, uh, most definitely. Well, uh, shout out to Lady Block. I don't really know him too much, but I, I heard about him. The basketball team he's pretty good at what he do. But uh, just me, just personally, like uh, I would just say I'm really like just a different type of receiver. Like, I'm not, mm-hmm. like, just a straight route guy or straight speed guy. Like, I have, like, a mixture. I'm more like a A.J. Brown, D. Bale, Samuel type of receiver. Mm. So you're a playmaker? Uh, if that's what you want to call it. Mm-hmm. Definitely, because that's what we need. I mean, that's that's a big thing that I saw on all the practice film that I've seen coming out from you. I'm like, bro. This the type of dude that can go get you six on any given moment. That's what we need, and that's why you was my choice. Okay, so okay, I, so, so, I appreciate that. All right, so Sam, this is G Holmes right here. So <clears throat> for me, I, I I picked you because I wanted you to you know to be able to showcase even more of that talent that you had. I feel like you were just coming into your own, you know, you know during the season and stuff. So I really wanted to see. You know, get you some, you know, more reps under your belt and, and get that starting position and, and really showcase that. So that's the, that's the reason why I chose you. Most definitely. Now, I definitely pick back off what you said, like really coming off the spring uh, last year around this time, I really felt like I was coming into that like role, like coming into it, you know, I was trying to battle for that position and stuff like that. But just throughout the spring, just going through the practices day in, day out, like just trying to my brothers, like I really like made me like grow into that role. I just wish, like if it wasn't for injury, like I really just would have been like a different story, but you know, so you gotta live with the punches and roll with. Hey Sam. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, uh, he, I can hear you. He, <laughs> that, that's what I'm gonna say. There ain't no way you would have been a starting that last year with KJ. You would have been on the chopping blocks with everybody else if you had to play last year. Let's keep it honest. We can sit here and talk all the crap we want. You wouldn't have been nothing with KJ. I'm, I'm going to put it like this. I'm, I'm going to put it like this. Like I said, like, I'm a different type of receiver, so I don't really need, like, deep balls, like, little stuff like that. Like, I'm a all-around type of receiver. I get involved from the run game first before anything because I take pride in blocking for my teammates to bust open for them. And then on the back end, then you have me. I'm very versatile. Like, I can take screens, jet sweeps, like, whatever you need. That's what yeah, I've always been known before. Yeah. Before I was even known as a deep threat, I was known more as, like, a, a like you guys say, a get yet. Yeah, but KJ would have been throwing to your feet. You wouldn't have had no chance to make no moves. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> this game here, man. Uh, no, KJ, I mean, yeah, KJ, this nah, thing. KJ, hey, you can sit around. Yeah. You, 
You can say it KJ, now because KJ, KJ ain't there no more. And you ain't there. You can talk nah, about it. No, no, I'm just saying this. KJ, he's a great quarterback. Like, especially at what he does. Like, don't get me wrong. I just felt like just the whole, just maybe, but everything, it just wasn't maybe like the best situation for him. But him as a player, like, don't get me wrong, he's phenomenal. Like, he could definitely thrive in the NFL. But just the situation just wasn't right for me. Part of a six year quarterback is, is, is was phenomenal by what KJ did. <laughs> I don't KJ, understand. But the thing I don't understand. But that, the, we'll put it like this, though. But with KJ, like, let's say, like, um, like the protection for him is not as good. He can extend the play. And most quarterbacks against, like, SEC D linemen and cheers and stuff like that, they can't just extend it how KJ has the ability to fully extend it. So they that's something he that he sets himself far apart from everybody else just in general off the rip because of his, like, size and capability. He didn't yeah. audible either, so don't that got something to do with it? Uh, I would say, I mean, more more so, like, because, you know, during the season I just wasn't as frequently just there. But i say, like, you, you just can't put it all on him. I'll just say it was just, just bad time and bad situation. Like, that's just the best way I can put it. Like, he's a great person, great quarterback, and then even piggybacking on Enos, if we get to that, like, he's a great guy, a great coordinator. It's just, just wrong, just not right fit, just not for each other. But them individually, great people at whatever, at what they decide to do. Yeah. Well, man, I'm with we appreciate you for coming on and, kick, and and giving us a piece of your time, man. For those that don't know, where can they find you at your next location, your next stop? If we ever, hey, want to pull up somebody, where where is Mbak AC? How he's doing? Where can they find you at? Well, for this year, me and my family best decided was me for the come down here in Texas and take the JUCO route for the season and venture my way out through that this way. And so, if you guys want to come down Kilgore, Texas. We run the state of Texas. Uh, if y'all want to tune in, we'll be playing probably the national championship later down the line in December. It'll probably be more Memorial Stadium. Okay. Mm. Well, man, so that's we, the, what's the name of that school again? Kilgore. Uh, Kilgore. Kilgore, Texas. All right. All right. So you're playing at Kilgore, Texas this year. Yes, sir. Well, All man, right, cool. like like I said, man, we definitely gonna be always be following you here on the Woo Pig Podcast, man, because we appreciate you coming in and rocking with us and kicking with you, with us. We appreciate you giving us a bit of your time. We're gonna let you get on with your night, man, and, and get back to doing what you do, man, so you can get back to being great, man. Nah, most definitely. I appreciate y'all. Thank All you right. guys for having me. On. All right, bro. No nah, problem, man. Have appreciate a good one. you, man. That boy boxing hey, got man. no chill. Look, 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 boy, mate. look, 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 all that, all that nonsense don't make sense. You ain't here no more. KJ ain't here no more. Just speak up because the people on the team are speaking up. Ryan Leaf, yeah. Jamarcus Russell was good guys. That still don't mean they was the quarterback. So keep it real. But he still got to be professional, you know, just hey, for his exactly. future endeavors. Hey, this, yeah. this is professional. If Sam was on the team last year, y'all be talking about him like you talking about the rest of the wide receivers. That's a fact. <laughs> 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 man, shout out to Mbake, man. We moving on to the next the next person here, man. Uh so we got that one gone. Which one was the next one? Oh, I think it was this one. That one. Yes, yeah. sir. So going to the next season, which press conference would you rather attend? You know, we always talk about how we can't wait to get up there and grill some people with some questions. Who would you want to sit in front of? Eric Musselman or Sam Pittman? Pittman. <laughs> we won't win. Man, I won't talk, so many I won't questions talk to Pittman. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I, I would I, have I, so I, many questions for Pittman. Yes. Mm. I, I want to talk to Pittman. Uh, you know what? I'm sorry, man. I got to go read my super chat. Uh, Fishman had super chatted us a while back, man. But I'm sorry. I, had to, I know I had that guest coming on, so I couldn't make it to it. The question isn't really equal uh, he's he's talking about the tournament. Uh, tournament gives championship opportunity. If question is make the playoffs or tournament, then I choose football. I'm with mm -hmm. it. I think it. I, but I the, I feel that. I guess I feel like the reason why I said bowl instead of the playoff is because I feel like the playoff is more like Sweet Sixteen, Final Four. You know what I'm saying? Like that's a little bit higher. But I feel it though. That's love. Yeah. I gotta get back to my scene. But yeah, man. 
It ain't it. So, Box, who would you sit in front of? Oh, it's Pippen all day. Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> they, they will have to usher Box out of the press conference. Right? <laughs> I mean, you. I mean, at some point, at some point, at some point, some of the Arkansas media's got to got to grow the balls to and ask some questions. tough questions. Yeah, and that's that's the reason why we we still campaigning to get these credentials because we want to ask the right questions. We want to ask those tough questions that everybody wants to know that we're talking about in the water cool over the water cooler that we're talking about in our podcast that we're talking about in all these other text threads, but nobody, they tell people, Hey, you don't you ask that question. That's the question that I want to ask to Sam Pittman. Hey, why based is off this question, getting that burn. Why is that? Why is yeah. 17 getting that burn like that? Why? Man, I want to hear from the people in the chat. Do y'all think that Box can make it through a Sam Pittman press conference without getting kicked out? Yes or no? Wait a minute. No. Wait, wait, wait a minute. I, wait a minute. I can that. Hey, that, that is a no. That is a no. Box, wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Because as soon as yeah. I see somebody asking a dumb question, I'm going to cut them off. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, Brickens said, yes, you would make it through. Hey, you must hey. be new, Brickens. Hey, this thing about Box. Box might talk crazy, but he got a lot of sense. <laughs> so I can make it through. But I promise you, Sam Pippen going to feel I was there. Everybody in the, everybody in the comments, nope. No, no. Box is not gonna make hey, it. Hey, <laughs> take a shot, OD. Hey, them people in the comments don't know me. The people that know me know I got a lot of sense. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hey. 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 And there's one person on here know I got a lot of sense. I know how to act. I ain't got it for as I got because I don't know how to act. And Greg Holmes know that. I know how to act when I need to act. Hey, you just said you're going to cut somebody off. <laughs> hey, get on there and say something stupid. I'm going to do it respectfully. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, bro, y'all gave me oh, man. man. All right, man, let's let's move on, man. Did everybody answer that one? Yeah. Yeah. It's no-brainer, uh, Sam Pittman. Uh, yeah. Let me make sure I get it. And then we got this last one. But, yeah, that's funny, man. Box definitely not making it through. But anyways, <laughs> would you rather win a natty in football or basketball next season? Which one, if you, if you could pick, what would it be? Football. It's been too long. Yeah. It's been 50 years. Yeah. <clears throat> mm. yeah it's been a long time. I, I, I need to see what that national championship in football, man. That's, you know, that's the revenue thing. But people don't realize football drives everything. You know what I'm saying? And, <clears throat> uh, I had somebody to text me, and this is what they said about the the uh, what we were talking about. They said, "Come on, man, bowl games are about to be irrelevant. College football playoffs coming to twelve to fourteen games. Football drives everything. The answer is a great football season. So we always want that. So <clears throat> that's what I would want to see, because like like they say, football drives." everything at a university all these other programs and stuff that they they have that these kids are playing in the swim team the soccer team and all that they ain't making no money they putting all that money into football because what you don't realize too is that when an sec team came they put all that money in a pool and they split it across those teams all the sec mm. schools so the football team is driving every college power five their sports programs so yes give me a give me a a football chip because what does that do that immediately drives your recruiting so yes give me the football mm. Mm. man it's a, it's a no-brainer for me man just to have something to say i've never experienced in my life it's got to be football no. i I've had I've seen the basketball championship. And don't get yeah. me wrong, I'll take either one. 
But man, if you ask me, tell me I got to pick one. It's got to be football. I ain't mad at it. Hey, I I be spending my life savings to get to that game. Hmm. What's What's up, you wish? We gonna go around the whole office. uh, Office Max. Experience, Experience Max. Max. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, can Does we do another, another? Can we do another commercial with Deezy? <laughs> no sir, no sir, no sir, no sir. <laughs> I plead the fifth. <laughs> Same thing you said, Oliver. I'm going football. Just I, I haven't seen one. Of course, we hadn't seen the basketball since '94, but I'll take that too. But football, man, I've been chasing that dream my whole life. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that'd be beautiful to see. And I think it's also the fact that we haven't even got close. Like, I I don't even, we haven't even felt the wind under the the wings. Give me a little breeze. That one season under Petrino felt as close as I've ever at least felt it. When we top three then? When we top three then? Yep. Yeah. 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 Box, what say you said football, didn't you? Did you answer that one? Football. Football. I'm by the Grim Reaper. Yeah, that's me. I got the hood. I'm hoodie mellow tonight. Hey, man, um, I appreciate that, that Twitter post you put about boy Errol Spence getting knocked out again, man. I don't appreciate that. I'm going to hey, post man. it every day. I should tell, I'm going to tag you every time. That, man. Well, you please, don't, you to please don't it. tag me. Please don't tag me on that. Yeah, man. Oh, I'm definitely I'm tagging like on that. it. Um, <laughs> definitely football, but. Again, I remember how close we were when Clint Storner fumbled that ball. Because if we had to win that game, we probably would have won. Because that's the year that Tennessee won, the year after Peyton Manning. And I know that energy, that game was like the symbol of, symbol of whoever wins going to probably go to the national championship game. And when we mm-hmm. lost that game, we fell apart. That's yeah, the closest we could be. That, that, that hurt my soul. That, that will forever hurt my soul. So mm-hmm. I would have to choose football over basketball because, we, again, we've had basketball success, even though not everything has been championships, but we've had so much more basketball success than football success. So I would have to choose football. Mm. Okay. Well, G got hey. out of here. He, he'll be back. He must want to get him a little refill or something. He'll be back. Uh Man, so we, we talked about a lot on today's uh, today's show, man. We had Carter on here kicking it with us. We had Mbake come on the line. Wes, uh, Bias, uh, Box, you missed the first half. But when, what, do you, what do you guys think about anything that was said on the show tonight? Well, I, I don't I agree first. with Carter completely. Some of his takes I agree with, but I – I think he's underestimating the wide receiver room. I think he's underestimating the quarterback situation. And I also mm. think he's really underestimating Bobby Petrino because if if you look back at that LSU game last year, it was close. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, he almost seems like he's acting like, well, they're just going to wash us this year. Well, it, it was close last year and we were no good. Our offensive line was terrible. So we know that it's going to be improved. So they better bring it is the way I feel mm-hmm. about it. Hey, they don't got that Heisman boy this year. That's right. He's gone. I don't I don't think our wide receiver room was totally bad last year. I just think we didn't have a quarterback for the wide receivers ahead. I think they're going to be better this yeah. year. I agree with you. And I think Broden is going to be better than people realize. Those yep. guys are tall, man. Mm-hmm. What's Broden like six, seven, some crazy? Or, yeah, he's yeah, he's tall, but uh, Armstrong's tall. Taylor Green is tall. I mean, they they can you can do a lot with height and athleticism. But is it any good outside the the, the red zone? If you you got to give a six five wide receiver a chance to go up and get the ball against a five ten DB, we didn't have mm-hmm. that last year. Yeah. Well, you have a guy that's very fast and mobile that's going to give those receivers time to get open too. Yep. Only we just got to be able to block. That's a little it. bit of push. Back. A little Maybe bit of push. Back. Be better. Um. Part of what I saw last year, though, and it might be schematically, and I hope it is, but receivers had a tough time getting separation at times. I think y'all forgetting that they had 
multiple games where they had a difficult time getting separation. Now, that could have been completely schematically, and I'm hoping that's the case. But I, I still take that under due note. Um, in regards to Sam and Bakke, I agree with Box. If I was to choose between the two, it would be a blocker. I'm just going to be honest. It's easier for you to get on the football field as a receiver with six receivers and you know, special teams and all that than it is to, with one guard. You know, but not when you tear your MCL. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're right about that. But I'm going to be honest with you. If I was to choose anybody, it would be McAdoo. I would hope he'd be healthy. I'd choose yes. McAdoo over Blocker oh, and good. over Mbappe. That was the dog. He was the dog before Braxton showed me dog. I, I'm, I'm I'm sad for that man that he doesn't have the opportunity to play football any longer. But I wish him nothing but the best in life. He was a dog. Mm-hmm. He went from receiver and went to the to the to the secondary and showed up and showed out on a trash defensive team. So mm-hmm. that's who I would have chose. But I mean, y'all guys are making all good points in regards to that. But I got to see the receivers get separation. Hopefully, schematically, it works well. But that was a problem last year with the football team. I think hey, I'm I, I brought, I, that's that's one of the things that that I brought up though is is about how last year some of our receivers. Were bunched up in you know out in the field where they were you know almost either bumping into each other running pick plays or you got your too many defensive guys in the area and it just it was it just looked jumbled the offense just didn't look uh crisp so for for me i I just want that i just i just want to be able to i mean let's just run some plays that that it's going to showcase your receiver and it's going to showcase your your quarterback. Let's see who. I mean, is your quarterback getting your man's the ball and he just missing it, or is your, your is your man's wide open and your quarterback is missing him? That's what I want to be able to see. Well, I sent many videos I? last. I sent many videos during games last year of uh, the same wide receiver y'all saying getting open was open. They just weren't getting the ball. That's what I was going to say, Box. And also, you got to take into the to account the psychological effect of every game. You're running these routes, you're getting open, and you're not getting the ball. The ball is thrown at your foot, or the O lines just. I don't even know why they were on the field half the time. You know, KJ had no time. He has to either run the ball or he, he throws in the dirt. You know, after so many games, it's like the defense did last year. Eventually, you just kind of give up. And so, you know, maybe as the season went along, they, they didn't try as hard. But, I mean, it's kind of hard. It, that would uh, that would suck to run routes every play and never get the ball. Hey, I'm going to say something. OD, OD can attest to this. Justin Fields. Offensive line sucked. So what did he do? He improvised. He, re- he averaged 100 yards a game just about. KJ didn't do that. Mm. But KJ ain't Justin Fields though. He ain't nowhere. But still, Come on. he. But still, if, if if your offensive line suck, you gonna run the ball. KJ yep. didn't run the ball because he didn't know what to do. Man, they couldn't yeah. block for KJ whether he needed to run or or pass. They, they, they couldn't block for Justin Fields, but he made a way. Now hold on now. One yeah, thing but we do. we went five and twelve too though. So what are you saying? Justin Fields, he was, hey, Justin Fields Who still. Who went 5 and 12? Oh, didn't we even finish 5 and 12 or what? 6 and, six and 11, Ooh, I'm sorry. 7, seven and 10. Put some hey, okay, I'm no sorry. He did this out of two victories. They, they still got us nowhere near the playoffs. But yeah. Justin Fields saw the light and he came on over to Pittsburgh. Yes, sir. <laughs> even though I'm not, bad, I'm not mad at him going to Pittsburgh because that's a team that I got love for because my whole family loves Pittsburgh. But, Box, you got to understand something, bro. Well, actually, I'm not going to even disagree with you, Box, because KJ is a one-read quarterback, bro. Like, when we going to keep it real here? KJ is a one-read quarterback, man. Second read if we're lucky. Hopefully Green's better than that. That's why I want Singleton, because I think Singleton's a three-read quarterback. He can go through progressions. I got a question, man. Unbiased. Malachi, how can you, how can, stuff. Unbiased, how can you be a Chicago Bears? Unbiased, how can you be a Chicago Bears friend? you don't know y'all record? That's a disrespect to OD. <laughs> <laughs> first of all, I'm going on top of my head. And first of all, uh, Box, I'm not going to let you gas me into this. I'm not going to let you do it. That's going to bait me. It's a, it's a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap. <laughs> hey, they Don't said this unbiased only off day. Give him some slack. 
I got two more things. That's me for always on that nonsense. It's the same day, Don't fall Sunday for and it, I'm not. I just I, I recognized like halfway into I was about to go rent. I said, nope, I better stop. <laughs> uh uh-uh, uh. Be wise, young man. Blood pressure down tonight. Yeah, man. Yeah, but Wes over man. there told me to talk about with this Malachi Singleton talk, man. I, there's a reason why I'm having that talk because that man has the 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 feet and the arm talent. He has more arm talent than Green. I'm guarantee you that. Well, I'm not disputing his arm talent, but I I know. I feel like I know, you know, we not, none of us really know, but I feel like we know how this is going to play out. Green's going to yeah, be because the starting Green, quarterback. Yeah, well, because Green is the guy that Petrino went out and got. So the only way Singleton wins the job, he has to truly outdo him. But I think he's going to put pressure on the job. I think he's going to be clearly the backup quarterback going into this year. Ledbetter yeah. will be the third string. Uh, KJ Jackson will be the fourth, and then and then um, Chris will transfer to try to get him a chance to play for us last year. You think Ledbetter over uh, KJ Jackson? Um, possibly because KJ Jackson's gonna be learning the offense. Ledbetter got a mean a mean arm. Mm. You muted OD. You muted OD. Wait, do that again, OD. Do that one more time. You muted OD. You muted. Ledbetter is the crash test dummy. He is not getting on the field, bro. <laughs> he is not getting on the field. I didn't say he, he was going to be like third string. He ain't yeah. going to be that. He well, not going to be third all, string. Uh, put KJ you could well put on 14 on some reps. I don't know. You kind of muffled there. I couldn't hear what you said. He gonna I get said, no did you reps. hear all right, Did you hear that Criswell's been getting some fourth team reps? No way. Well, we, you missed the first part of the show. We talked about that, Chris Webb. Man, he he gonna he hit gone. the portal, man. Yeah, he, he gone. gone after this, man. Yeah, he he's gone. gone. No Bless way he's around. It was two players gonna leave, either Chris Webb or Singleton. If not one both, of them, one, one of them was gonna leave. Malachi I think or Chris Webb. It may be both. I I think Malachi is gonna stay. Yeah, I hope so. Well, I hope he does. I, hope so. I don't want him to leave, but. Have you seen pictures of Taylor Green standing on the football field? He's a grown oh man. Oh, that dude is big. He big. He's he, he a grown man out here. He's tall. Absolutely. He's six five. Man, that height beats short. Yeah, I think he's six day. five, six six. He's about the same size as Matt Jones was. So I yeah, think she, Matt Jones is like six two. But you know, yeah. this is a this is an interesting comment right here. Arkansas misuses talent. In football, all the time, Sam Pittman does. I was no, gonna no, say, no. this ain't even no Sam, bro. Everybody, they've been doing this since back in the but, days. How many pros mean? we got to do Tavares Jack Jackson? and Pro and end up being great? Say that again, unbiased. It's been a many a pro that came from Arkansas that we did not use properly when they were in yep. college. And this Tavares is not Jackson. Sam. The Tavares guy that they Jackson. benched Hudson Clark for that now is a, a starter for the uh, Detroit Lions. Bro, he the drafted. list goes on and on and on of misuse of talent at University of Arkansas. But that's, you know, what we were talking about last year is who is the judge of those talent? Who Who is the judge of the talent? Is it the position coach? And then after the position coach comes and, you know, puts his lineup together, is was the OC and the DC were they were they trumping those guys? That's the that's the true question. That is the true question. I guarantee you, and I, I think we all will agree that this year Bobby Petrino is going to play the best offensive players. And I'm talking about from your, I mean, at all of your skill positions, everything on the offensive side of the ball, Bobby Petrino will control that. Do you guys agree? Definitely. No, 100. We'll, we'll, we'll see if he gives Malachi Singleton a shot at the job. If he gives uh, Washington a, a shot at the job. It's a That's lot what of cast that. That's going to be about. Yeah. I mean, if they just going to, you know, do status quo and put the, the person I paid the most NIL money out there to and say, hey, this is who I'm running with just because we gave him 300 bands then he ain't putting the best player on the team because most of the times the dude that's behind him hungry because he ain't getting 300 bands. Facts. I want, I want your job. I Facts. want your spot. 
Well, mm-hmm. so the reason I don't think that I want, want that three hundred bands. You hear me? What Washington? What Washington? <laughs> yeah, so what, which, what, what Washington? Are you talking about though? What Washington? The tight end. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's anybody behind Luke Hawks. It don't matter who you put behind him. It don't. It don't matter who. It don't matter who the second tight end. You made, you made half a point. I don't. I don't understand what you're saying. It don't matter. I mean, it don't matter. Luke House is the starting tight end from day one to the end of the year. It don't matter who you put at that second tight end behind him. You can it put does matter. He's, it don't. It so does. If you run, I mean, so if we run twelve personnel, who's going to be the number two? One going to be a blocking. One going to be blocking, and one going to be Luke House receiving. So Varkis I think Gums. Uh, I mean, I heard Varkis. Varkis Gums is really coming along though at that at that uh, second position. Pla- Plasky is the blocking tight end. Yeah, it, yeah, Puska. That's a, I don't know how name is Puska. I don't know how it's, it's hey, felt he, weird. He he got Washington baptized by a boy from uh from Alabama in practice. He baptized that boy. <laughs> he told him out the fray, so they can One put him out there all they want to. I didn't mean to cut you off on bias. Go ahead, man. No, I'm just gonna say that the yeah, that blocking tight end is really good, but see, the thing is, Ty Washington is a respectable blocker at tight end. He's the only one that actually has a little bit of blocking skills. So I could see him getting on the field before Gums, but Gums is a great playmaking catcher. You expect to see two tight end sets a lot often, and sometimes they're gonna be utilizing the tight end as a receiver as well because these guys are skilled. They're not. They're gonna. They're gonna make sure that these guys see the field some and utilize their talents. Bobby Petrino is the offensive guy, and I expect. Expect him to use them to the fullest of his abilities. So I expect to see that this year. <clears throat> I say this. about Bobby Tree, Bobby P is he ain't never ever not misused a wide a offensive player. He took a Jerry's Wright, who was the third or fourth person in that recruiting class, and made him the number one wide receiver. Mm. Yeah. He took a wide reason. receiver and make him a tight end and made him to an NBA NFL draft pick as a tight end. Yeah. They they don't have any room to play though this year, Pittman and the coaching staff, because if they don't put the best guys on the field, they're getting fired. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Immediately. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, shout out to the LSU Tiger fan talking junk in the chat. I hope we stomp y'all out. Y'all ain't got your quarterback next year. You better be careful. You're talking greasy <laughs> and it's going to be like getting real slick for you. Watch <laughs> <laughs> Say, watch your mouth. Hey, who is he? Who is he? What's his name? Uh, that was uh, uh, I seen Christian Bears. Talking about y'all can't recruit. We uh, literally won a title. Uh, two recruits in one day. Y'all suck. Y'all lost another recruit. Y'all down. Bad. Go Tigers. Yeah, he got a right to talk his trash, though. You, you, congratulations, you <laughs> bum. <laughs> you bum. I'm <laughs> coming at your head right now. <laughs> All, the way Man, all I'm saying is I can't wait to after spring ball when we do these meet the hogs because I don't think anybody yeah. understands the players we got. We got four legit tight ends. We got probably eight legit receivers. I'm, I'm going to show y'all who we got and, and we're going to see what it do. But I promise y'all it's not gonna, it's not going to be easy for y'all Tigers this year. We we, we, we winning it. We coming mm-hmm. for the boot. But I'm saying it, it now. It wasn't easy last year. Facts, I know. No. They barely beat us, and we was high garbage last year. Yeah, they exactly. do the reason why because their offense was great, and their defense was complete boo boo. Their yeah. defense was boo boo. If we had, if we had their offense and with our defense, we would have won a natty. <laughs> All right, put the crack pipe down. The <laughs> <laughs> hey. offense with our defense, the way our defense started out that playing. Comment. That's a natty. Unbiased. Is you talking about they offense with KJ or they offense with Daniels? That's a big difference. No, they offense with Daniels, not with yeah. KJ. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Offense, so. And then with our defense, Cincinnati. I, I hope y'all understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, I yeah, think I misunderstood. I was thinking KJ. <laughs> KJ checked out last year, unfortunately. He checked out. Yeah, he did. Mm. We'll see how he does mm. with Gus mm. Malzahn. I'm actually uh, interested to see how KJ plays this year. Gus Malzahn not, is like a Kendall Brown type offense coordinator. So he yeah, gonna do he good. is. I think he'll do good yeah. there. Yeah, he'll have some hey. success. If KJ go off next year, I'm going to be mad. I'm going to be real. Well, you, I'm really I, won't be, I won't be mad because that means he just dumbed down the offense for KJ. <laughs> yeah, that milk has been spilled, bro. You don't need to cry over that. Yeah. Just get up and clean it up. Ain't nothing to worry about. It is what it is. 
I'm going to be mad because he wasted my time, money, and energy this season. We we went to games. So that's why I'm going to be mad. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Uh-oh. Wait, wait a minute! I need I need a, a, a sound effect for that box. Wait, wait, wait a minute! Wait, wait, wait a minute! 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 Man, hey man! Shout out to Jessica girl, Davis, man. She said, "Shout out to my fam for another great show. Don't forget to hit the like button and yes, show sir. them some love." Man, she Much man. love. Bro. Jessica Davis, we appreciate you, but I want to give everybody props because this is the first show that I've been on that OD and G Holmes ain't had to say one time to hit the like button because y'all yeah, show we didn't have to say nothing <laughs> earlier. We, we just threw it out there. Oh, we're gonna get two hundred. We get two hundred. Can we get 200? Yeah. We got 278 yeah. people in the chat. If you ain't hit the like button, to close out the, the 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 comments just for a second. Hit that like button, man. You in business. Like but the 278, that's a, uh, that combine all the platforms? Because I see what says 175 on YouTube. I see the real. So it's actually 278 in here. Oh, that's just YouTube? I thought that was a combined platforms. I'm sorry. That's why I nah, was asking just, that. Yeah, that's just YouTube. It don't okay, show me... Cool. T- well, yeah, it don't show. Actually, you know, I take that back. Because it's saying 175 yeah. in the chat on you YouTube. You're absolutely right. There are 103 people on Twitter. Yep. So it's 280 in total. So that might be why we don't get that, that 200. Yeah. We have 200 names. They're watching from Twitter. They're watching from Facebook. Shout out to everybody on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, and all across the globe. Man, well, Facebook yeah, yeah. shut it down. Yeah, Facebook shut, they shut down streaming. So. We can't okay. No more. Got you. Yeah. But shoot. What I tell y'all about month though, I told you it wasn't going nowhere, y'all. Well, you gotta internet. You gotta entertain. You know, the 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 information until otherwise spoken, and then you know, he had to shut it down, right? Yeah, I just didn't. I just didn't see Musk leaving on such a sour note. He has too much pride to go out like that. I'm biased. Mm-hmm. Don't get it twisted. Nobody wanted Musk. Nobody yeah, came so you after Musk to get how him. You know, how I you disagree. know, Bob. That's the reason Musk here. Now, I don't want Musk to leave, but wasn't nobody knocking down Arkansas door to, to interview well, Musk? Coming up and stuff. That wasn't him doing it. That was them talking about him. Stop it, Box. Speculation nobody Box. Nobody knocked down Arkansas door to interview Musk to be their head coach. Because he shut it down, Speculation Box. No, nah, because the season we had Arkansas, they don't want that at their school. That probably hurt some, but the thing is, his name was brought up for a reason. Okay, it's because those schools were interested. Nice try, speculation hey, box. Like I say, I'm glad he back, but wasn't nobody knocking down Arkansas door to get him. You you can't say that when there was that type of speculation well, so going on. There haven't been a ton of openings either, box. Exactly, it's, it's, a, it's enough. I mean, box is hey. two different jobs. That's not freestyling, bro. Hey, long as more than one opening, that's enough openings. And Louisville's still open. Yeah, but that's so, not a... I don't know if you guys see this comment down here in the ride with J-Rod. I think that's uh that's Justin. He says uh J- Jamarian Parker just decommitted. That we said the the running backs that we had, somebody was leaving. And yeah, that's the one that. that we got from St. Louis. Mm-hmm. So he decommitted. You know he about to go to TCU. Hey, Jimmy Smith hit him up. He committed in one day. Wait, he going to Nasty. TCU? For, I'm, I'm sure wow. that's where he's going. He, you remember, he committed but, with Jimmy Smith. Jimmy Smith ain't there no more. Oh, you're right. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, well, he That's one thing we ain't worried about, though. Like we always yeah, say, true. we ain't worried about yeah. no We ain't worried about we no running backs. Back. So. Thank you, y'all. Right. That's the last running position back. we ever worried about. Mm-hmm. Running that back, they dime a dozen. Way less than the old lineman. Yeah. yeah, and we got two young great ones. I mean, imagine coming in behind Russell and Augusta. <laughs> You'll play when you're yeah. a senior. <laughs> <I> know, <right? laughs> yeah, man, that's man, not that big a deal. Yeah, well, man, it's been another great show, man. We've been rocking out for over an hour and a half, man. I appreciate everybody for rocking with us and kicking it with us. Um, 
I think I, I, I actually, yeah, I thank everybody for helping Chuck Todd out. We appreciate yeah. that. Um, man, we hope to see everybody on the hill. G gonna go over all that. But man, that's it for me, man. Anybody else got anything they want to say before we get up out of here? We'll start with with, uh, with uh, Wes. I'm happy Muss is back, and I hope he comes back with a, a renewed fire in his stomach. But I am yes, like sir. Box. I don't really like that UMass or U, U, UMass uh, guy. He's the 16 guy. Right now. Yeah. We need a little mm-hmm. better athleticism than that. Yeah. Box? I just want to say everybody be up on the hill that Friday before the spring game. I'm going to get DZ drunk. So get beat up. <laughs> I want y'all to see it. I want y'all to see it. Hey, we're going to make bad little brother into a big little brother. That day. No, you're going to make him a bad or little brother because you're going to have him drunk and acting bad. <laughs> hey, OD and uh, Greg will tell you, you're going to pay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll close with this, man. I'm glad Mus is coming back. I ain't making no. I, I, I'm. I'm not gonna be talking about. I want this player. I don't want this player. Last year I did all that. Mus went out and got the type of players I thought we needed, and it didn't work. So Mus, you do your magic that works for you and how you coach basketball. I'm not talking anymore about you getting all these offensive guys. Go get those hard nosed guys. It's gonna make those hard plays. It's gonna help push the team over the edge. I don't care if they can. They shoot 20 percent from three, as long as they leave it out there on the floor, because that's what got us victories before. And I want you to work your magic. Football team, please do something. And uh, and, and, and these these decommits, I wouldn't lose our mind over it because winning cures all. So we got to win, even though I don't think we're going to do well this year. I hope I'm proven wrong because if we win games, the recruits will come. I'm tired of everybody talking. About, oh, you know, you know, you know, no, no, W I N W I N. That's what make players come winning. People don't want to be part of losing programs. And Mike Neighbors, I love you, but the ladies need a new basketball coach too. The end. Um, the Oracle is out. Good God. <laughs> you sure look like Lawrence Fishburne. Easy. Yeah, watch yourself. Watch yourself, bro. Watch yourself. I look like I look like Stephen Brimley. I don't look like no dog on Lawrence Fishburne. Larry Fishburne. Red <laughs> pill or blue pill? That's what you look like. Taking but, both of them. Uh, <laughs> I just want to say, man, shout out to Wu Pig Nation, man. Another great show. We got to talk to Carter to Power. We got to talk to Sam and Bake. And we even got to talk about my Steelers a little bit. So it was a great show for me. I don't know about y'all. So thank y'all for Justin Fields. Thank you, Bobby P, for coming back. Thank you, Must, for coming back. I think we went through pain so that now next season we can have some game. And I'm going to leave it at that. Wu Pig. G, take us out of here, baby. Yo, it's your boy G Holmes in the building, man. We thank you so much for kicking it with us, man. But one thing we do want you guys to do is to experience peace of mind with Insurance Max. They are your one-stop shop for home, auto, and commercial insurance. And we're talking about all over the state, baby. So don't wait. Call today for a free, no-obligation quote. You can secure your future with Insurance Max. You know what it is? It's where protection meets affordability. Hey, give Wes, Caleb, or Sandy a call, and you can safeguard what matters the most. That number is 870-534-2823. Again, that number is 870-534-2823. And again, you know we got to rock with the OGs. 3M Electric. They are your trusted electrical contractor serving Northwest Arkansas. They are uh, both commercial and residential contracting. These guys are SD, V-O-S-B. You know what that means? That's a service disabled veteran owned small business. These guys are both reliable and dependable and no job is too big or too small. So when it comes to all your electrical needs, you give 3M Electric a call. That number is 479-408- 9865. Again, the number is 479 408 9865. And when you call these uh, sponsors, you tell them that you heard it over here on the Woo Pig podcast. Man, they got something special for you guys. Hey, thank you once again. And we, we don't, we want to remind everybody, we keep telling you guys this. Uh, April the 13th, we're going to be up on the hill, man. we kicking it uh, all weekend long. 
uh friday night we're gonna uh we i, I think we're gonna try to uh i'm gonna find a place that we're gonna go because we need to make sure they open because we're gonna be kicking it man we don't need nobody they're closing at nine o'clock that's not gonna be good for us so uh stay tuned for that uh on that's april the 13th for the spring game a hey, uh, and again thanks to everybody that reached out man and and helped one of our brothers tonka todd come all the way up from luann arkansas man that's as far as south as you can go without getting in louisiana man he gonna come make the trip up on the hill and kick it with us also uh for the first game of the uh the year arkansas uapb that's going to be august the 31st right here in little rock arkansas at uh war memorial stadium we will be kicking it and tailgating man all the crew is going to be out there big sexy od the bad little brother coach box uh i don't know who else come oh i know the sponsors are coming uh 3m electric will be there uh insurance max is going to be there man so it's going to be a great interchange of uh entertainment man and just good old family fun so come on out man talk some trash with us man and we going to be eating and i mean doing some everything but like I told you guys, there is going to be some contingencies. Ain't nothing going to happen. You ain't going to get no love from us unless you are subscribed to the channel. So you guys need to go out there, man. Go tell a friend to tell a friend to subscribe to the channel. And also look for our website, thewoolpig.com. We got a lot of great things going on in that channel, a lot of great stories. Also check for our merch as well. And we're just doing a lot of big things, man. We coming. We hear the Woo Pig podcast, baby. So guess what? You know it's your boy G Holmes, aka Big Sexy. You know what I like to say? Hey, I said what I said, oh, oh, and we oh are. God. Yeah, it's the five hundred one, baby. Uh huh. You know how we get down on the Wolfie podcast. Ooh. Shout out OD. Shout out G Holmes. It's the best. Big Sexy.